Today is the Harvest Goddess Design Challenge Critique Hour. Thank you everyone for joining the live streams. I really appreciate it. Um, the Harvest Goddess Design Challenge is something that I um, host every other year, something like that. Um, and it really is a different kind of character design because you're taking a look at trying to make characters that feel like they're larger than life. You're basically painting a goddess. So it's a, a, a simple character design to make a, a character feel like an NPC or, or a playable character. Um, not much goes into trying to, to trying to infuse that character with the sense of the sublime or the celestial or the, again, the larger than life. And then when we're looking at god creatures, creatures that are supposed to be godlike, um, some of my favorite god designs, I mean, you, you, the God of War series can be a, the starting game, so God of War 1, 2, and 3, when they were designing um, uh, uh, the gods of Olympus, they just had to make them larger than life, you know, big muscles, and most of them had one key element between them, which is um, they had a, a little, like a glowing eye, or they had that disconnected, almost inhuman uh, style to them. So you see characters like, well, this is Hercules. He just was a big brute. And in, in, in God of War, if you don't know what it is, all the gods were technically antagonists. They were the enemies of um, Kronos? Not Kronos. What is it? Kratos. What's wrong with me? Kratos, right? Um, and uh, when you look at the newest version, the newest series, um, God of War 4, and then the upcoming series, when we look at Tyr, the God of War in Norse mythology, um, you see also a very, very um, uh, godlike look to him. And I just want you to take a look at all of them and just try to notice what it is about them that seems uh, demigodlike or godlike. Um, so when you take a look at them and then you take a look at um, uh, Kratos himself and then a couple of the other gods like Mimir, which is the head, you notice that almost all of them were dehumanized through the eyes, which is a really, really big, like it's a simple trick, but it's effective. Dehumanizing the characters through the eyes is something that takes away that sense of mortality. Though God of War admittedly is more of like a very textured organic version of it. The way I see it is that it tries to be gritty and real and that has that brittleness of reality to it. But if you, there's a lot of other games that, um, or even animes that try to represent final forms, godlike creatures, um, and, uh, and other, other beings, and they always take away that sense of humanness from the two big things, which is again the eyes, and the last thing is the feet. For some reason, when you get rid of the eyes, the detail in the eyes, the warmth in the eyes, the humanity in the eyes, and elevate them so that they're floating in the sense that they're floating above all the mortals, all of that, you get the feeling that you are painting a godlike being. And that's it. It's so easy. It's just little tiny tricks that make a big difference. Um, so this is something that I, that I discussed last time and some of you picked up on that because you watched the previous critique hour and you, uh, and you basically took from that, which I encouraged you guys to do, watch the previous critique hour and uh, try to take as much as you can. So this character here, let's start with her. She does not feel like a goddess. Um, one of the things actually that I did when I announced the Harvest Goddess, if I could, uh, uh, grab it for you guys real quick is um, I announced it by showing you guys one of my favorite designs for the Harvest Goddess which is one that my student did a while ago um, and it was another example of um, glowing eyes uh, but the one thing that they used this time is transparency um, that's another really great thing to show that they are jumping between celestial planes, let's say. Um, so transparency, feet that are not necessarily grounded on anything, and glowing eyes, those are, that's the key, even when you're representing phantom characters or something like that. And this is across the board, this is for 2D, 3D animation. Um, you want to find what it is that defines mortality, which is the fact that we're stuck on this plane, the fact that we 
are, are, are controlled by gravity and the fact that our, our humanity is real, our humanity is tangible. So you take all those three things away, it's really through the eyes, you make them difficult to reach. When you don't see a character's face, for instance, you are walking in the dark and you don't see someone's face, you are more afraid of them, you are more suspicious of them. And the definition of the sublime as a concept, sublime is something that you are equally in awe of, but afraid of. Um, so us actually making the eyes of the God creature difficult to reach is, is making them invisible, getting rid of the pupil in the iris and giving it a glow, which also makes it so that there's a slight sense of suspiciousness to that God, is that Gods are usually, in literature, seen as um, beings that have no mercy sometimes or are blind to the human struggle. Um, if you see that time and time again through different stories. So when you see a character like that, even these, you know, AAA companies um, that create these games are still at the mercy of these rules. Um, how to make a cre Obviously, they scaled him up. He's huge in the game. Um, but also they made sure to apply at least one of those critical factors, which was um, obviously the, the glowing eyes in his case. But if this was some kind of magical element, it wouldn't just be a character DBZ style, um, like Thor or his brothers with their, you know, really strong weapons, but very, very grounded feet, almost like they're not full God. They're just part God or less than. Um, but uh, but those are really, really quick go-to design elements that make your characters feel larger than life, makes them feel divine. So that's how I'm critiquing these, is not so much which colors you picked and whether or not your lighting is right, is if, it's, if, if you've been asked to design a character that feels divine, celestial, sublime, all of that, are you, are you pulling that off? Um, so here, we definitely don't feel it. This feels more like a nymph. A simple protagonist character from an anime with some powers. It doesn't feel like a godly celestial being. No matter how much, how many crowns you're going to dress her up with, or the fact that she's flying, it's still not enough to push her further from us to get the feeling that she is a celestial being that isn't con confined by the rules of, of mortal life. Do you understand? One of the biggest things that I've noticed, um, especially with the way they, they designed Athena in the God of War series, so Athena, God of War, um, is they also did that glowing element to her. She also glowed, but she was kind of a ghost as well. But even in the start of the, of the series, she had a little bit of that um, kind of, she was in her astral form. Um, and then when she comes back as a ghost, especially in God of War 4, um, where she uh, basically haunts him while he's retrieving his weapons, um, which is one of my favorite scenes in God of War. Uh, I'm trying to find it. Uh, if I play the video, I might get in trouble. I don't think this is from God of War 4, is it? Is this the scene from God of War 4? Uh, when she's standing by the shack. Um, I'm not sure if this is the one. But again, you see that transparency and the glowing eyes, mostly because she is a ghost, transparency, jumping through different astral realms, all of that stuff. Um, uh, but the glowing eyes is what makes her distant from us, what makes her not easy to, to access. And then the one thing that, again, that comes from that not being able to access the character is the lack of expression. So if you have an expression it's, it can, it, you can mess around with all kinds of stuff. You can add um, an expression to a faceless character if let's say it's a possessed character or a character that is undergoing some kind of transformation and they're either in anguish or they're just evil smiling about it. But if we're talking about neutral, um, almost like a cruel neutral, um, gods, which that that's what they feel like in, in movies and games. They're cruel, neutral. You get that that glowing eyes, that above matter, not restricted to, to mortality. So how do we make this character feel like that? Um, well, one thing is that 
the, the, the beauty in her face, the, the babiness in her face is cool and all that. Um, and that's great for any other design, but you're talking about a goddess. You're not talking about like meek anime gods that have, you know, you can call anything a god in anime really. They can take any form. They can take a form of, of a guy who's just walking down the street. That's usually how. <laughs> Sometimes in anime is literally it could look like that. But when you're talking about an assignment where you were working for a game, let's say, which is what these challenges are all about to emulate um, studio environments where you've been hired to create these characters that are larger than life, um, you, uh, you, you are expected to provide the feeling that this character is huge, this character is um, domineering, this character is powerful, and powerful in like this uh, uh, like creator, omnipotence, all of that stuff, the sublime. Um, so the smile feels weak, it feels like it takes away from the mysterious distance of a god character. Again, this isn't a normal character design, and that's why I have fun with it. You really are expected to rely more on um, uh, pre-existing, kind of, yeah, for sure, I play with the textures and the environment and how you are portraying the bringing of the season, the harvest season. Um, but you still have to show that this is a god. Almost every god throughout cultures punishes in some form or another. So Freya, the goddess of fertility, is also the goddess of war, I believe, or the goddess of justice. Um, so it's, it's interesting to see how these themes overlap. All right, so just doing that alone really made this character feel a bit more scary, a bit more powerful. It's not just a little girl with some pretty powers. It's a character that is literally changing the seasons around the globe. They are the, you are personifying the power of nature through a character. So when you were looking at your submissions and while you were painting them, did you guys say, am I personifying the power of nature, of mother nature um, uh, in this character I drew? Do, does the viewer feel like they are looking upon a character that um, represents that much power, but as a human being? So why do we personify things uh, you know, at all? It, we're humans. We love personifying things. We've done it. Every god we've ever written about, every pagan religion, every 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 polytheist religion, anything like that, we, they have all personified things that shouldn't necessarily, that aren't, you know, human or human in nature. Um, they've added that humanness to them because we understand things better when they look like us. So uh, that's why it, this is a fun challenge because we are, we are turning this power of nature, Mother Nature herself, the Harvest Goddess, into a recognizable human form but we can't just paint a human we have to make the viewer feel like they are looking at something all-powerful something sublime which is interesting interesting you know philosophically to think about a mortal form a mortal vessel like ours in the shape uh, or, or trying to represent power uh, humans have always written about stories that give us power where we don't have power like DBZ, for instance, is an example again. Everything about DBZ is what every man wished they could do, which is fly, beat the shit out of things, super strength, everything that we can't do. We fantasize about doing them through art. Um, you name it, every story you've ever read is about things that we wish we could do as a species. Um, so we're looking too much at the ground. I don't want to pay attention to the crop circles on the ground. Um, I'm not sure how crop circles in, are, are factored in. Maybe you're saying that's the presence, that's her visiting a crop, you know, a, a, an area, a farm, and then just leaving her mark, etc. You've, you've also left her staff, which should be a little bit more visible. You've actually cropped it out of the way, which is unfortunate because it would have been cool to see it um, in its completed form because it is part of how we are the viewer is going to identify and recognize. So that's a key term is can your viewer recognize what you're trying to do? Is it recognizable? Can they pick it up? Um, a lot of you fail with that across everything. You know, even when 
it, you guys forget how the viewer thinks. You guys forget to think like a viewer. Can they pick this up? And I think that is one of the hardest things to do as a creator is to imagine yourself as the one receiving the product. Um, as for your gesture, um, the gesture doesn't feel so. You can see how I fixed up the silhouette. Um, you threw a bunch of light behind her, but there is almost no silhouette uh, happening. This is why I spent so much time on my channel on silhouettes, because you guys love them, you guys love doing them, but you always do them wrong. You forget that a silhouette has a certain minimum level of darkness needed for the character. If you are going to have light behind a character, there is a universal the minimum level of shadow the character has to have or else you're just painting transparent or translucent things that just don't pick up any read from the viewer's side because it's just too washed out and doesn't make much sense all right so i'll show you the before and after just for her robes and if you really wanted to, the robes to feel like they are translucent in certain areas these dark spots right here could have just been uh, the spots where you put in the subsurface scattering. Um, and that's as simple as um, doing something like that. And, and subsurface scattering, I did a video a while, a while back on it. And it basically is just find the spot where the shadow usually goes and just unload a bucket full of saturation and illumination. So there's this and then there's a little bit more of that so I balanced out the color and then there is also the presence of the light itself in the fabric because it's both saturating illuminating and leaving behind the color of the fabric um, so I'm going to copy paste that go to before any of this was done paste it and then just let it mix in with soft brush Okay, so um, so what's the point here is you start with the main important thing you want the viewers to read and everything else out of that starts to fall into place. So we started with the god being this almost terrifying being. Look at her. She feels like a terrifying being. We don't want her to feel approachable. We don't want her to feel like we can sit with her for lunch at school. We want her to feel like she's this sublime super being, supernatural being. And then we've got her, um, her little weasel hamster, what is this thing? Um, a gerbil? No, um, uh, what is it? Honey badger? Um, which is a great animal to pick, but let's get rid of it for a second and talk about what it is that I meant with that elemental I mean sorry the, the the yeah the elemental creature that the familiar that travels with her so it's about you should everyone should have a good understanding of, of cultures across the world and see how they pull the same shit off because you as students of art are actually students of art from the past write that back to me as much as you study art and modern artists that you follow today, you should be students of religion, meaning you should be students of the way art has manifested through religion in the past, because religion always follows that great epic. You know, outside of the religion as a negative, there's good sides and bad sides to everything. The good side of religion is art. It always will be. It's like not a redeeming factor even, because religion is toxic, but um, nowadays anyway. But uh, the redeeming factor of religion is the amount of art, the sheer amount of art we've picked up over these, you know, as long as humans have existed. Um, the art of ancient Egyptians, the art of the Ottoman Empire, the art of Rome, all of that. Um, the, how you can't go anywhere in these religious areas with long, long histories without finding art. So if you are going to be students of art, and now, modern day, you should take a look at how familiars were represented years ago. Where does the concept of familiar even come from? And why are we talking about this? Because it's existed for centuries. Um, so millennia. Um, so the concept of Fenrir, which is the, the, um, 
the dog fur, um, what's her name? Uh, Hella, I believe. Um, but I don't think it's just Hella. I think the Fenrir or Fenris, um, the Norse god, North, sorry, the Norse mythology uh, familiar of whatever god it is. Um, I'm pretty sure it's Hella. Um, uh, is a, uh, a good example of what I mean when I say it could be a cute little uh, pet, but if you think about fe the phoenix that Dumbledore has in his office, very, very strange creature, very sublime in its power. It's very um, a very quiet creature, but it represents a lot of what Dumbledore is. He's very flamboyant and very colorful and a very um, uh, fun-loving but extremely powerful and mysterious wizard. So when you're talking about this character, which yes, she seems very childlike and playful, probably something that you could write to connect the Harvest Goddess with children or fertility, when you talk fertility, though, you want to paint a big woman. Like, you want to paint a woman with curves. You want to just build off of that. Um, but you're using a child form right now to represent, uh, to represent, uh, you know, what, uh, what the harvest is. That's your choice. That's how you want to take it. But um, what would be a, a childlike familiar that might inspire the or get the viewer to pick up on what you're representing. I think um, a familiar that I would have picked is what you already picked, which is the ladybug. I would just stick with that and I would just surround her with a swarm of ladybugs instead of that weird, almost sad looking blue creature you had here. I would also do one more thing, which is um, just get that leg out. I don't know why you made it one unit, but it's really falling off and it's not giving us a good read. So the kind of body, she's kind of doing this twist. So take a look at my pencil right now. She's doing this, tw oh my God, I'm about to draw a swastika, aren't I? Ah, uh, shit, I'm gonna do something else. She's doing this twist with her legs, almost acrobatic. Thank God I stopped that. <laughs> Jeez Louise. Um, uh, so I feel like the other leg is kind of working off that almost gymnastic momentum, that twist. You know, I'm not sure if you guys have seen it. I think you can see it if you look up underwater acrobatics. I don't know what that's called. Water dancing. Um, but when they twist, they kind of do, uh, that. <laughs> I'm not even looking at the chat right now. Um, so I think if you had given this leg a little bit more flexibility moving out, You'd have had that breathing room in between her legs instead of making her um, entire lower body one stiff and very uninteresting unit. You could have just done something like that. Um, uh, I would also ease up on the curve since you went for that childlike form with the big head and the little torso. I wouldn't try to overlap that with any um, uh, sexual kind of matured woman body signatures like the big butt um, and then that way we can see her feet overlapping some of what we have here all right and so we get to see her feet a little bit that foot is actually not where I wanted to put it um, all right so I'm just gonna keep going. I'm gonna try to do them all today but this is just a quick, I hope you guys are picking up what I'm putting down. <laughs> um, I hope you guys are understanding me that when you paint a godlike creature, when you paint a creature that's supposed to represent unimaginable, un unimaginable power, you're usually painting it to show that the protagonist is up against a lot. So it's not just for creating big creatures that feel sublime and larger than life. It's so that you could make the success that that, 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 character that goes through um, uh, even more, uh, uh, have a higher impact. Um, so if you think about uh, uh, Hellboy 2, Hellboy 2 creatures were off the chain, all right? <laughs> that stuff, uh, damn, damn, damn. But if only the story was as good as the, as the, as the designs. 
but unfortunately we do we get what we get so when you see a character like this this is a godlike character or a servant of a god or a lesser demon the eyes and the and the wings and all of that she's just a bad bitch okay really fucking cool design of that it, it took my breath away when i saw it for the first time i am not a big fan of who they keep bringing in to do these to do these these guys I, that one actor i'm so done with him and his hand dancing um i'm sorry if you're watching this mr mr guy who who's who's the one and only guy uh Guillermo del toro keeps going for under all these suits you may just change your act up a little bit because it's getting annoying but anyway take a look at these designs if you're if you're showing that the protagonist is about to go up against a baddie like that you're setting them up for a higher, almost unimaginable level of achievement once they do overcome them. This obviously is horror themed, but you can see the eyes are gone. It, it dehumanizes the character when we're looking at something like this. So none of you guys went for that more evil, pan, sacrifice, harvest god, like midsummer kind of feeling. You know what I'm saying? Um, you guys went for the good being, the good uh, the, 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 the good one. Um, so it's not always about just painting God creatures or being able to paint God creatures just say, just so that you can do it. It's a whole other ball game. It's a whole other level of creation when you can make a character feel like you are actually witnessing another being from another dimension. It's so easy to dress up a character and make them cool. One of the recent shows I watched, which is, I uh, forget what it's called, uh, Sandman. We see a lot of different kinds of creatures that are supposed to represent uh, elements of life. Um, so Sandman, um, the Nightmare. Um, they're called Nightmares, but I forget what she's called. Sandman, Nightmare, um, Galt, was it Galt? Yes. So she's supposed to be a nightmare bringer. He's a he's the king of dreams and she's bringing in all kinds of nightmares. Technically, she's an elemental, but also in a sense a god. He's also a god. This is also supposed to be a, it's not a god, it's a sub it's like a servant of a god, like a minion. Um uh so one way that I I feel like this failed, but also might have succeeded in your opinion is that we see her eyes. That's really what made her not feel like she had that much of an impact as a character to me because they did not take away her eyes. But one character that scared the bejesus out of me is this character. Again, this all goes back to Neil Gaiman, right? He's the one who wrote this part of the the lore, if I'm not mistaken. I, I did some reading on it when it first came out. He's, the, he's got no eyes, which made him feel very menacing. You felt fear for the characters he was about to kill. You felt fear for them. Um, you felt in danger. Like this scene, this vulnerable child with this guy who's, not, who's never had good intentions for anything, you feel a sense of fear. Um, but this was supposed to be a good character, but we're also talking about a nightmare that caused a lot of trouble. She was a bit more of a tender character who just wanted to be a good person, but it's an example of uncanniness that may come when trying to humanize too much while also dehumanize. It's one of the more uncanny, difficult to look at designs from that show. Um, so be careful with that. If you're going to go for the transparent, elemental, and just, just throw on a human face with all the humanness there, it's not going to convince at least, you know, a good viewer, it's not going to convince them that they're looking upon the personification of a nightmare, okay? So that's why when you are even doing elementals, when you're doing any kind of non-god creatures, go for the eyes, <laughs> okay? When you're attacking this stuff, go for the eyes, because it's really the first thing that should go when making these designs. So comparing this here, this kind of like reveal splash art for this goddess, I feel like we pick up a little bit more on the godness of her and that plus a little swarm almost like the way we see a swarm of that's not really a swarm is it when 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 that rise of the guardians with with 
the Easter Bunny, <laughs> Jack Frost, and all that other stuff, and Santa Claus, which is a fun movie. Um, they could have gone without the Easter Bunny, but um, uh, you, you, the, the swarm of hummingbirds that follow the Tooth Fairy around, which I think is one of the best designs I've ever seen and in interpretations for what a Tooth Fairy is, because hummingbirds are fast and they fly everywhere, and she's just surrounded by these hummingbirds that are everywhere that are doing her work for her. So if you had done the same thing, but with ladybugs, and then you would have completed that cuteness of everything, you know, a god of mercy that personifies itself through the smallest creatures to teach humanity mercy. We've seen that many, many times, many, many times, you know, God is in a flower concept. Um, uh, but, uh, but, but yeah, that, that whole really lazy, depressed creature of depression <laughs> that you had before, I don't know what the hell you were doing with this, but it just felt like a girl and her pet and she's got some powers. Um, but if you want to upgrade it to make it feel like we're looking at a godlike creature, um, I really think you could have gotten rid of that animal and put in a little bit of effort um, with that swarm. I know the swarm can be intimidating because it's a swarm, it's a lot of painting and a lot of time to dedicate into something like that. But um, honestly, if you copy paste your way through it and just picked a select few foreground ladybugs, You'd have carried the concept home. Uh, the ladybug theme would have been more visible. And then that plus the wheat and the field. And then it seems like she's just, you know, doing this big swirly attack of some kind and just changing the leaves and changing the colors of the, uh, bringing the harvest and changing the season. Okay, let's talk about this one. So one thing that a common, common mistake when doing concept art for characters that are supposed to look celestial um, especially against a black background like this is you run the risk of just making them look like someone in cosplay um uh, uh so when your characters this is a big uh, it's a, it's a weird place to be in when being a character designer um when you are painting characters in character designs and they're supposed to be this part of a world your world building you're building a whole world and you're showing us the world through one character if they look like they're at a comic-con con like a comic-con con convention I guess um, and and they're just in a in cosplay that's considered a failed character design they're not supposed to look like they're they're putting on a play it's not supposed to look like Disney on ice. It's not supposed to look like the Lion King <laughs> theater. I've never seen it and I never will because as soon as I saw those lion helmets they were wearing, I knew I couldn't take that seriously. <laughs> but, um, but when they look like they're in costume, that's when it feels like we're not getting it. So you did do the eye thing, which is really, really cool. You dehumanized her that way but you made her kind of standing around. One thing you could have done is possibly made her um, a little bit more, giving her foot that floating feeling. So it's just one little trick, but it's annoyingly simple and effective, but it's, it's, it's just a small little trick and you're probably gonna guess what I'm gonna do. And that's just, um, that's just to, make her foot feel like she is floating. She's larger than life. She's not bound by gravity or the common restrictions of mortality. She is deathless. She's a goddess and that's what goddess means. When I write goddess, I don't, she doesn't need heels, all right? She doesn't need heels. She doesn't need to elevate herself two inches higher. Um, a, a concept of a heel is always funny to me uh, on character designs that are supposed to be of of really powerful creatures. Um, so if you just have to look at, but like, you know, personified. It's, it's, it's always funny when I see the heel. I always think of gods and goddesses as barefoot because it's just part of, sh that's why, that's why when Voldemort first was visible to us in Goblet of Fire and he was barefoot like that, imagine he showed up with shoes. Just take a moment, just close your eyes. Imagine that first time we see 
Voldemort, he's in shoes. Isn't that funny? Because he just puts on a robe, but he's technically, you know, he was naked when he first evolved or whatever. He first um, transformed. So it makes them look more terrifying when we see them without shoes because why aren't you wearing shoes? Don't you need shoes? Don't you need to protect yourself from the elements? Aren't you, aren't you, you know, a human? You're not. You're not wearing shoes. This means that you are above mortal restrictions and mortal suffering. So when you're showing shoes, be careful with shoes when you are painting these godlike creatures because they're not supposed to look like they need shoes, okay? It's just a small thing, but it, it goes a long way in, in to, you know, making it read a little bit more effective. Let me see if I could keep adjusting this so that she, again, looks like she's floating and not standing there with some Jimmy shoe, Jimmy Choo's. All right, Jimmy Choo, is that, is that technical? What is it? What is he called? Jimmy Choo or Jimmy Choo? Um, I just want to make her look like she's just floating. Um, this is going to take a little bit more tilt. All right, that seems better. Okay, so do you guys see what I'm doing here? Is I'm just showing that there's this little suspension, a sense of, I don't want her to look like she's on her toes, so. Just a little bit of suspension in the way she's standing. Maybe even just like we see with Hades, which is really similar to the way they designed Voldemort, is that we don't see Hades' feet in Hercules, the Disney Hercules. We don't see his feet that often. We just see him floating around in fire. He's an element. He's an elemental with bad temper, which is why he's one of my favorite um, designs for, for, an, for a villain. It just looks really, really cool. So let's talk about the fact that you picked a black background. You picked it for your own reasons. Maybe you just felt like it would make the colors pop, all of that. But what's happened is that you've actually kind of taken away from our ability to read the full picture. This is a harvest goddess with sunlight and sunset colors on her being. Why is she surrounded by the dark? Maybe we're looking at her in the celestial plane. Maybe she is in the world of wherever gods go when they're resting. Um, so right now what I'm doing is I'm just using some colors here and there to bring a, to kind of create a halo around her and that'll kind of make sense of that dark environment you added her in because there's only one reason and one reason only one decent reason why you need a black background in a character design environment to show off glowing elements in the character design there's no other reason for it it's it kills and it kills your scene it kills your colors it drowns out it creates this weird boldness um, around your character that actually just makes no sense because we, we don't need a black background to make her feel like the the thing we're intending so just give it a sec i'm just gonna throw a little bit more oh it's not fully black in the way you it's not actually black okay um and uh just continue that little halo another thing i'm gonna do is um give a bit of transparency it's not i just i don't want her to feel blackened but i also don't want her to look equally opaque all the way around i want to make some parts of her kind of disappearing into the background almost like they're see-through or just connected to that what i'm going to add in a second which is going to be that kind of wall of stars she's just in her uh, in her realm in her which is a very go-to again another go-to quality so um if you want images i'm just gonna pick um anything i can find really off of google and then use it on the image except on screen screen filter and then just throw that on top 
And that's going to continue the feeling of that kind of astral realm that we have, that we are witnessing this goddess living in. So you could do this in your own way. You could make your own layer. Obviously, I don't have time to paint it, but it goes a long way. So that way, it's really quick tricks. Really, really, it's just a quick, really quick trick that doesn't look cheap, but it's very, very quick to making that black background into illustration level completion. Okay, um, let me pick up one more. Um, which is a good one? Hmm. Mm -mm -mm. Um, bear with me. So I may not, you know, do a critique like this for every single one of them in this scope, but, uh, just doing it on these and really when you guys are done uh, make sure you guys are applying these corrections because it is it is a really really interesting uh, portfolio piece to add to show that you are capable of drawing you know characters that look a little bit larger than life that feel strong that feel powerful this is a bit too much stars for me um, sorry about my, uh, my, my clicking I'm just going to pick a spot to have her in and then uh, just continue that general glow on the character. I don't want it to look too busy, but I do want to add that elemental, non, you know, not, that not really opaque feeling. It's just a very translucent, distant, can't reach her feeling. This is a goddess. This is the ultimate power that you could possibly draw. In your art at any given time so um, like remember that uh, give me a minute don't know why this is like that all right I'm just gonna merge down okay and uh, then I'm just gonna do one more quick brush of like a golden golden white color not beige just like a golden white touch there and then just bring down all of this extra translucency just just so that I had something peeking through after I made her see through um maybe we could just get rid of this one keep this one instead and uh just clean up some of the glows I added. And then flatten. And then just really just raise that glow in the eyes. Just, just don't be shy. This is you're painting the ultimate power, the ultimate thing. You've seen it in games and movies. This is always some kind of superpower that's impossible to defeat or is the ultimate point the ultimate point for a character to reach um and writers all you know bow in a sense so to speak to the concept of a god in their drawing because they know once they bring in the god factor they are restricted to a only a number of decisions before that character becomes unrealistically powerful or just kill their character. So it's, it's it's it really is a big decision for a writer to make, to make their characters feel like gods, because at that point, what can defeat your character anymore? The story's over. Um, so if you take a look at the before, just felt like someone in like a carnival costume or cosplay, and then after, just with the flo floating feet at least, it's now reading to the viewer small changes that make it that have more impact. I would put the other light as well. Small changes that have a big impact. One thing I actually want to do is add just some water ripples just to show. Usually, if you've ever watched the OA, the OA has this really cool concept, and it's not just it's not the only one. We also see it in Stranger Things. The the water place, the place that's all dark that is surrounded with water. And it's like the dimensional window where you can cross into other realms in that water place. So adding just some ripples 
here and there might actually go a long way. Oops, I have auto select on. Into making her feel like she is floating in this strange extra realm where uh, I'm just going to flatten. Nope. I'm just going to flatten the water ripples here. That, uh, that she can easily travel in and you explain that multi-dimensional jump that gods do to approach our realm, stuff like that. And if you find that you're not a great writer or that you writing doesn't come easily to you, watch more movies and start taking down notes. You'll be able to make decisions like this. But I really think the, the water edition here, so let me see if I could expand it. And then just do one quick little trick, which actually might solve a lot of the questions for us. Um, one moment, bear with me. It's just throwing her reflection on the water ever so slightly. It might be very, very fun to add. I don't know what the... F okay. Um, so I'm just going to catch her whole thing and then paste it. Flip vertically, bring it here somewhere, flatten it a little bit, bring it here somewhere, um, and delete. Try to connect the toes to each other somehow. And then filter, blur, but I'm going to blur horizontally with motion blur because that will make it feel more like a reflection. And it'll just give you that little extra tangible sense of space. But obviously it's this magical space that's water, but it's, there's sky and there, I mean, um, there's stars behind it. What? This is so cool. And um, obviously I'm doing everything really quickly and very roughly. You should try to do this stuff in, uh, a bit more carefully than I am. Um, and then the way you frame things, I just keep increasing the size of the canvas. You really did give us a very constricted canvas. Um, but I'm just uh, adding a little bit more space above her attach. Uh, I should have picked this color instead. And then just darkened around. <laughs> So do you guys see what I'm doing? We're using cues, little stage cues, cinema cues, to make them feel like they're no longer in our realm. They are these super beings, and it's all about delivery. Write that back to me. That's what it is. Everything I've mentioned is just about the delivery. And I'm just using a little bit of a glow. And then there's so many other cool tricks you could use, like there is um, just adding a general glow off the floor, going upward with some white. My soft brush is really grainy on purpose, um, and it's adding this extra little grain. And then I would, I would add way more ripples than this. The ripples I want to add, you could do it with smudge tool on max on soft brush, and you're basically just um, here, you're basically just smudging the reflection as well. Do you see that? That's also a really cool little way to make things feel like they are on the water surface. But you use the, the reflection color, which is let's say the crown color or this color for the ripple itself, which is just like this ripple here. But I love that the idea of using water as a way to represent jumping between um, between uh, material planes or what are they called? Dimensions. Okay. Um, if I were a writer, I would probably not even try it. Too big of a can of worms. This, this character. Um, Let's take one last look at the before and after. So imagine these as movie posters, as promo posters for the show you're about to watch, you know, like Wheel of Time or something like that. So before, again, some kind of carnival cosplay, and then after, 
it really feels like a representation of a goddess. This looks like a super being. And that's how these are supposed to feel like. So it's easy to give you guys assignments about um, simple character designs, mortals from a mortal world who live and die. But when you're designing a character that's supposed to feel colossal, this is how you do it. You, you dehumanize them and you push them further and further away from us. Because as humans, we've been told that God exists, but you know, it's such a far away concept, so difficult to grasp mentally. That's what we're representing when we, um, you know, white out their eyes and make them float and make them feel like they're part of the elements around us. Uh, this one is cool, but you grounded her feet. Oh, it's also very washed out and she feels very small in her surroundings. Um, so one thing that we could do to enhance this is, uh, is first of all, we want to color correct. So she's got these beiges on her, but the sky is purple, but it's also gray and kind of overcast. What's going on? Um, you want to add the halo behind her, but you're kind of shy of the contrast needed. Um, I understand contrast can be one of the most difficult things for a student to understand. Um, when, oh, I don't want to use it it's, and it comes hand in hand with fear of failure students like I don't want to use it because I might use too much but I know I need it and I don't know how much to do it anymore because I spent years not painting with contrast so now I have no idea what to do when it comes to contrast but if you're painting a sky or something like that don't be afraid to add in the necessary amount because the sky is bright you never go outside and look up on a sunny day you can't even the sky itself is hard to look up at in the in that so that means that you're talking about heavy contrast required when trying to pull off a read of a sky of a character in the sky so that's the first thing i'm going to do is just introduce simple contrast all right and so i'm just gonna limit it to just behind her head and there so you did have those glowy eyes a lot of you watched the old critique hour and got what you needed from it which is good but now it's about color correction and saturation. It feels extremely dull. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just saturate, just a quick slide, so no, so I can know what colors I'm dealing with. And now you have to decide, are you gonna go with those peachy tones of her skirt and her dress, or are you going to go with that purple winter frost queen color. Obviously you don't want to do the frost queen. I can see why you're doing it because the frost is also, but we're not talking about the bringer of the frost. We're talking about the bringer of the harvest. So it's not necessarily a winter concept just yet. Um, all right. So I'm just going to turn that background into almost like a fall sunset color. You could throw in some purples to the sunset as well those pinks in a sunset just like this um, and the purples as well just some simple sky color right there at the top somewhere oops that's too much I actually want to use like a turquoisey color um, for the sky here and then maybe some extra little reds and purples just to wake the whole thing up. And then we're talking about her. So she's got this snake that's got more detail on it than anywhere else she has on her body, which has actually caused a focal point um, imbalance. Her head, um, she has a very big body, uh, but the head feels very small for her height. But it is a god creature, so it can you can get away with weird proportions. I don't, I'm sure everybody in the universe by now um, uh, has heard about Peter Morpacher uh, and his Angelarium. One of my biggest inspirations when I was a growing artist. And he, um, he has this cool thing where he makes these angel creatures. They're angels, but they're creatures, but they're beings, but they're exactly what they're supposed to feel like when you're thinking about the god of water and the god of waterfalls and the god of this and the god of that um peter waterbacher even his name is epic where is images i hope you don't mind me mentioning you peter 
I'm <laughs> so disrespectful to a guy. <laughs> I hope you don't mind me mentioning it, Mr. Morbacher, sir. Um, but uh, but you take a look at this. Take a look at this one. I'm sure you all know exactly who this is now. Maybe you didn't know his name, but you knew of this art. Just amazing. This is the god of death, I believe. Um, the angel of death, Ezreal, I think. I remember this one. One of these was one of the ones that I would just stare at and just sit and stare at. When I was 18 or something. Um, but uh, but you just take a look at. I don't think it was the Angel of Death. It was Angel of Punishment or something. Um, no face, no face, no face, no face, no face, no face. Because they don't need a face. They don't socialize like we do. Do you understand? See that epicness behind it? That's what we want to do here. So when you floor, and most of them are floating, most of them are big, gigantic beings. Um, so when I'm talking about having weird proportions, if you're going to go for this long body, you could have given her a slightly longer neck um, as well, just to make her feel more like a Greek goddess sculpture. They really raid the, the, the necks on those sculptures are huge. And, um, and just, uh, and long too, like they're thin and slender, um, and it makes them feel more poised, more powerful, more like goddesses. There's no tension in their muscles. They are relaxed, but they are ever present. They're powerful, but they are, uh, um, in the shape of a human. So you have to find a way to balance those two so that longer neckline and relaxed shoulder really makes her feel like she's just you know like sticking her chest out and very proud and powerful but um but the size of her head is still a problem for me and as well as the snake there's also the general issue with the uh, silhouette so i'm going to darken her i know that the whole thing is darkening give me a second and I'm just trying to bring down just her values and do my best to lasso this whole thing. And then you gave a little moon thing there. That moon isn't doing anything. It's not fixing any of these issues. It's just it's just a little decoration. It's a little crown. It's a little, you know, whatever that is. Um, Forty is too high. Let's try. Let's try twenty-five. Hmm, it's not great. It is not great. And you want to know why it's so hard to lasso? Because you didn't have enough contrast. That's the biggest giveaway. That's a good test too. Midway through your process. Hey, let me see if I can even lasso this. Um, that will also help you determine. So what I'm doing right now, very clumsily is just bringing in that silhouette and then I'll control it after. It's a little dull, I'll color correct, don't worry. Okay, and this little bit, this little um, thing I'm doing right now is actually really going to wake this scene up. It's just going to make it look like that Kanye West video with the with the uh, uh, I'm not going to try to karaoke right now, but those first two notes should have, should have, should have directed you to what I'm talking about, to the video. What's it called? Power? Such a good song. Um, all right. Things I do for class. Things that I do to embarrass myself. It's okay. It's all educational. For the kids. Do it for the kids. This is the bracket. All right. So it's kind of starting to get that freakiness, but actually let me just, I don't know if I'm going to get in trouble for this, but F it, let's do it anyway. Um, so this is the feeling I'm getting off of this, so power Kanye West. All right, so it's one of the coolest effing videos I've ever seen in my life, only because of this whole, the concept of him being a god. First of all, take a look at what the fuck's happening here. He's got these really cool Frank Miller Sin City glowing eyes here which is I love that anytime I see that I love it 
and then you've got the symmetry, which is like a holy symmetry. Um, and uh, then you've got the contrast and the background. Obviously those godly colors, which is that glowing sky color, the disembodied architecture, the disembodied creatures, the characters. Um, and in, at the time, this was just, this was, it shocked me when I first saw this, like it came out in 2010. Like I was a child <laughs> and I saw this and my eyes opened to how terrifying art can be. Um, just look at how th these characters are upside down. It's just like there's no sense of gravity. There's no sense of time or space. There's no material plane. He's just representing himself as a god. I, this is, this is the perfect look into a narcissist's mind. Um, and I'm not, I'm not memeing or joking here. This truly is what narcissists will see themselves as. And it's insane. It's insane how... And look at the name of the of the video as well. It's just pure and utter narcissism. But anyway, a narcissistic person can also be a great artist. Um, and I'm not sure how many people were involved in the generation of this video, but the slowing and the speeding up, the lack of time, slowed time, uh, sped, it's, it's just all really effing cool. So this is kind of what this is reminding me of, that whole dark but very powerful, sublime, scary, terrifying, but also Harvest Goddess, all right? Any one of these bitches can be Harvest Goddess, all right? Um, the symmetry alone is spooky. It's very spooky. Um, each side feels individual to itself, but not necessarily. Um, so what I'm going to do is just keep working on this silhouette. Um, so I added that darkness there, but I'm also going to, oh shoot, I'm just going to preserve my lasso in case I need it again. Um, I'm going to merge her down and then just do a quick color correct, which is, I'm just going to pick a, a general wash color, something more gold and red. You can also get that superimposed um, highlight, I mean, a... Uh, uh, nebula uh, on screen layer and I'm just like browsing through the colors color shopping and I'm just gonna add that in there put it, bring in a couple more colors it's really just to create a general feeling of balance I'm gonna get blue just throw that over bring it down put it on a color layer um, and then just pick which areas I'd like to read blue more than any other areas. So maybe the outskirts of the illustration could be a bit more blue, but generally around her being, there is more orange. So there's that, it's like an insurance layer to make sure you don't have any dead gray zones. But now I'm going to get yellow, son of a, I'm gonna get yellow and I'm going to Use it on color dodge, brush mode, and see what happens. It's all just a chemistry experiment. When it comes to colors, it's a chemistry experiment. Throw whatever, throw whatever in there. As long as you know a good starting point, throw whatever you need in there and, and see what comes out. Most of the time, that's what I'm doing in critique hour. I'm just experimenting and let my, letting myself experiment. Um, so I did that, and I'm gonna go to a previous version of that um, and then just pick which areas I want to preserve as what I initially did which is this and then which areas of the gown might be a little less dark so we can get those subsurface spots where we have a lot of light coming through you can just hear the song playing right does anyone want to sing it for us you don't want to come to the front of the class and do this while I'm okay. And uh, let's see, see how mortal she looked before, but now we're adding that celestial glow. And then all around her, one thing I want to just show you is the sky has always been something mysterious to our ancestors. Oh, the sky, the 
the sky, Zeus, thunder, lightning, explaining tsunamis, explaining hurricanes. It's got to be a god that we angered. Let's kill a virgin. Um, that's that's our history. That's who we are. <laughs> that's the legacy of our ancestors. So when you think about a god creature that you're trying to bring into a 2D image for some game, you want to have that same impact. So I'm actually just going to get cloud. Just a picture of clouds and superimpose it and show you what you could be getting out of adding more clouds. Cloud sunset. Um, what's a good one to use? And clouds also represent like anger in gods as well. So it's always been a, a place of mystery. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, the sky has always been something that we stare at, we look at, but don't understand. So pull from that as well. And I'm just going to add, this is actually a great one. I'm going to add almost like a, a clearing in the sky around her. Flip horizontal. Flip, no, no, no. I meant to flip horizontal. And uh, just do that before I do the other layer. I'm just so adding more clouds will make her feel like she is in another plane, not necessarily a, a, a star nebula, space, astral plane of some cosmic thing. Uh, but and it can be earthly, but there are still things on the earth that are very terrifying to us that are still larger than life. Um, for instance, again, hurricanes, tornadoes, tornadoes. I used to look at tornadoes as a kid and want to puke because it was so we it was so powerful looking and terrifying. Just a video of a tornado used to freak me out. But I also wanted to be a storm chaser, so you know, eventually, <laughs> passion turned into niche or turned into uh, sorry, fear turned into my passion. Um, so open up. I'm just gonna use. All right, iStock photo, you won't be like that. All right, just one more little layer here, just on some kind of thing. Actually, that's terrible. But just to show you, this is the version of the textures needed. That's like the other piece I critiqued, but obviously this time it's, uh, it's just clouds. And then I'm going to just bring in that rim light. It might do do a little bit uh, to help us out here with the dullness of some of the textures. This is this imagine like your character in this movie or game has had a dream, and they are in some kind of really dark time in their journey. It's a plight, so they've been visited by this being of pure light. They could be evil, which is what I love about God of War, because they ended up being a very malicious being that had no intentions of helping him, had selfish intentions of her own, but she introduced herself as this good, sublime god thing. And that's what the, the whole theme of God of War is, is that the gods can't be trusted. They, they abuse their power, and humans should take their power back. And it was more the human side of Kratos. He, was a, he wasn't a demigod, was he? Or was he just endowed with power or something? Um, I, I still don't know to this day. Um, probably should check the chat, though. Um, so I'm just bringing in more of that sunlight, just kind of uh, nudging at those colors to come out a little bit, wherever that light is. It's not that the light is behind her, it's that she is the light. And... Again, she'll feel more like that Kanye West video. I would hide her feet in more cloud. I would also add this very controversial decision, <laughs> not really, which is just make her transparent. Um, have the layer, you'll obviously have layer access. I, I don't, but have the layer kind of show some of those clouds behind her. You see what I'm saying? And then you'll get the feeling that she is kind of in between worlds. And then when you have this in your portfolio and someone's like, what is this character design here? This one's really cool. You said this is the personification of a harvest goddess. Then they're going to be like, oh my God, that's amazing. Um, 
And that's that's what you want people to feel when they look at your images. Like, oh wow, am I really looking at an actual god? And that's the power of artists. They can make things that are just concepts, just things we imagined um, to be tangible, right? You feel like you're looking at something powerful. It's not just a drawing. It's not just a drawing challenge anymore. You're learning how to represent power in art and just look at the power of art through all kinds of cultures. People, you know, millionaires and billionaires and video producers and 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 fashion designers and anything from anywhere is always all about art. That's the role of art is that it makes things that are just impossible to visualize or things that are not real into something very, very real. And you, all you got to do is just open your mind to, to what patterns of history, um, what different things mean, like for instance, the lack of eyes and the floating feet and remembering what it is that humans want the most. So almost every human hates gravity. <laughs> um, and, uh, and just more, the mortal world, you know, being fear of death, etc. So almost every human doesn't want to die. And as an artist, yes, you do have to think about these philosophical avenues, these, these really interesting questions to ask. And that's what makes you decide on making a character that feels like they're larger than life. So it starts in the head. It starts in your mind and your ability to visualize it. Um, so the unfinished ones I want to look at in a second. For this one, again, it looks like a very happy, very wealthy lady that's put on all her best stuff and just went for a walk. So how do you make this woman with her pet chickens and her pet mice feel a little bit more like a goddess. So what happened is you actually, you yourself noticed, hey, she's looking a bit like a mortal, like a very wealthy merchant woman. So let me put a big ass halo. Instead of intrinsically representing the halo, which is what we did with these pieces. All right. So these pieces here, we represented the halo um, subliminally, sort of, not really, it's not liminal. But uh, where the hell did it go? Where's the one that I just critiqued? Oh, there it is. So we represented the halo without actually drawing a halo. Do you see that? But you just slapped on the biggest halo you could find. You just found it, you added a big circle. Hey, look at this. You might as well, might as well have drawn one of those thumbnail circles on YouTube. This is the part of his goddess. You won't believe how wealthy she is. You won't believe click here for I don't know um, so <clears throat> when you add that big ass circle it's just a cop out it's not it's not actually doing anything all right so get rid of that circle because it's cheesy it's lame nobody needs it we don't need a circle to tell us we're looking at something we can see it's right there in front of us so give the viewer some credit you already added the sunlight behind her you added this beautiful subsurface scattering and the rim light it's all gorgeous and he just slapped on a big circle for no reason. He did not need it. All right, so I'm getting rid of that. Getting rid of that. Okay, so now that we have gotten rid of that very, very flat circle, um, that flattened the image, we can now try to mess a bit with <clears throat> how to make her look like she is a goddess. Uh, so her eyes are closed, which is okay. If you want to make her look like just pure light, pure goodness, just the goddess of mercy, goddess of motherhood, goddess of all of that, goddess of fertility, goddess of wealth, goddess of, you know, the merchants pray to, um, uh, the harvest, all of that. So what you are trying to represent is that you want to keep that she's very she's a lot closer than the usual god to the human because she hears their prayers and actually answers do you know what i mean so one thing you could do is actually just get rid of those chickens which is very funny get rid of the chickens and just cover up her feet in some more of that straw pattern do you see what i'm saying so she kind of appeared to a farmer who was, this is the story, usually almost always there's a farmer or there's a paralyzed guy who can't walk, who can walk again, or there's a farmer who's 
who's in debt, whose family is starving, and, and for some reason the crop keeps growing and giving out more crop. Growing up Muslim, I heard so many miracle stories. You can't miss them. You, you, it, they're hard to miss, and they're, and they're very easy to duplicate. This guy went into the shrine, came out. He went in blind and came out, you know, came out seeing. And this other guy who who ran out of food, but he had these guests coming. He he prayed to the goddess, and she gave him this, and he had this this wine cup that never emptied, and she served all of the guests, and the guests all drank merrily, but the but the pitcher of wine stayed full. You guys have heard this bullshit before, right? That's religion for you. Humans are funny. All our stories are the same. Um, once you learn them, once you're kind of disillusioned by the whole concept. But right now, this farmer is starving. He's really hungry. And she appeared to him in the middle of no... Tell me that anyone here... You guys are coming from all kinds of cultures, right? Tell me I'm, tell me I'm wrong. You guys have one of these stories, don't you, in your cultures? <laughs> I know I do in mine. Um, and they're all the same. They're very miraculous stories. The goddess appeared to him and his all his field that was once empty now was full of crop and was um, uh, bountiful. And his crops grew in a matter of hours right before him. All of the crops grew and and matured and he... And, and then he became an example for those who are merciful and charitable. They, they eventually uh, are rewarded by the gods in this way. Do you see what I'm saying? So that's the, you know, the whole thing with, uh, with all of this, is that you're trying to pick a story, pick a moment where this goddess or god revealed themselves, and then you're trying to... So when you surround them and sh don't show their feet, do you see how amazing she looks now? That we don't see her feet anymore. Do you see that? Now it looks like a goddess that revealed herself. She floated down from the heavens. Even the story of Jesus' second coming is he's going to be floating down from the heaven on the wings of two angels. I'm quoting verbatim in the Islamic version. Islam believes that Jesus will come down as well. Um, so uh, again, it all, it's all coming from the same thing and it, it, you want to get rid of the feet. <laughs> That's the key behind all of it. We've cracked the code. They're going to come get me now because I've cracked the code, you guys. Just hide the feet, you're going to become a god. It's just, it's just part and parcel. It's all the same. So this painting is actually amazing. What you did with the, with the straps, what you did with the body type, you, you didn't just make her thick, you actually put fat where fat goes on a heavier person, which I really appreciate. Um, and then you, uh, and then the, again, the, the green, the green that you picked around her dress is beautiful. You could have put in a little bit more yellow in there, just here and here, and just around here, because subsurface isn't just about the highlight color, it's about bringing the color of the light source itself into the image. Um, but yeah, all you have to do is hide the feet. <laughs> Jesus hates feet. Exactly. Um, so let's take a look at the before and after. Before. Those chickens. All right, chicken is delicious and all of that. Like, I understand that. I understand why you add a chicken here. I really do. But we did not need it if the chicken presence was going to make her feel a little bit Less human. If you were going to add some golden light as she stepped foot, get rid of the shadow because she shouldn't be casting a shadow, it might have created the same effect. But with this, it kind of got rid of the chickens in one fell swoop as well as the feet. And we just make her look like she has descended and revealed herself. That moment, if you've ever observed the way religion works, the moment that celestial being reveals themselves. They came back in the form of a lion. They came back in the form of a pigeon. They came back in, and, and everything glowed. They came back and the light seemed to surround them. They revealed themselves and the sky seemed to open. You see that the common theme here, the common concept is that things are moving out of the way so this great being can enter the scene. 
and and you know and can whatever do whatever the hell they're doing um the way that mary was impregnated by god in both islam not impregnated by god islam doesn't believe in the son of god but it does say that an angel came down and revealed himself to her in a great light and there was so much light that it scared her do you see what i'm saying it's all the same thing um, who knows if this is all real? We all die and find out one day. <laughs> but uh, but until then, there's these really common storytelling patterns, storytelling tropes that we as artists have to pick up on. So our illustrations tell the same stories that were once long time ago orations, just spoken word, memorized from artist to artist, became writing, and now they became art. Okay, um, so for this piece, it is unfinished. It feels like a... It just feels like a mortal being. It feels like a character design for a queen or a princess. Um, and this one obviously is not done, but you are going in the right direction. No feet. So again, <laughs> no feet. <laughs> and uh, and the eyes are kind of gone. Uh, so it feels very ghostly, even if she is just a ghost. The fact that she's holding a lamb has a lot of religious significance, not just in Christianity, across you know paganism and all of that. And of course, there's a halo, there's the symmetry, really, really simple units to represent power in an illustration that are extremely effective. Uh, this was a nice discussion. It was very fun. Thank you, everyone who participated in the Harvest Goddess Design Challenge. You guys rock. Um, I would love if you guys consider joining as a patron. So it doesn't, it's not a lot. It's not a huge commitment. It's just a dollar a month. Um, to keep this community going, to keep it moving forward. Um, so you can do that here. A patron that's a dollar a month is called a watcher, and they're called a watcher for a reason. They keep the community running. Um, if you want to join my Discord, I will be uploading Sketchtober soon. So we just did Sketchtember on our Discord. So go to the community tab and click this to join the Discord. Please, please, please consider joining the Discord because it's so much easier for me to announce uh, streams and all of that uh, through Discord. I am seriously considering getting Streamlabs or some kind of uh, multi-stream option so I can stream to both Twitch and YouTube soon. I feel like I can't just pick between the two of them because I've got viewers that want to stay in YouTube and viewers that want to stay in Twitch and there's just no wiggle room. Um, so uh, it's going to be really easy for me to announce all of that through Discord instead of relying on Twitch and YouTube to send out announcements because obviously YouTube has effectively killed my channel and Twitch is doing this whole weird thing with its creators now. It's all very, very scary and it's very stressful, um, but Discord is my way of bypassing it. So if you happen to, to, to drop into this video and you are watching, please don't let the watch go to waste. Go to the community tab on my store, I mean my site is rack.com and click on the join the Discord server. Um, and then October 1st, there's gonna be a Purchase Studio sale and my masterclass. I'll cover that all in a separate video, but just keep in mind there's a sale coming up. Thank you everyone for joining. This was such a lovely challenge. It really does introduce the season for us. It makes everything feel so much more festive. Um, and it, it's, it's an amazing portfolio piece. If you guys are going to apply all of these changes, Please consider um, applying them, apply these corrections. They're great portfolio pieces that go a long way. Thank you guys. I will see you guys on Tuesday the 4th at 5 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, bye, everyone.